Okay, it's Toby from Heavyweight MMA. Today I was supposed to take the kids to school, but no, I said you're walking to school today. I'm talking to Alan Super Ali Philpot. How are you, brother? Good, my bro. Good, how are you? Good, man. So tell us what you're doing right now. You're doing recovery in a, what is it? Yeah, it's like an h bot machine, so it's like an oxygen chamber. Usually you have this little mask on as well. Um, but I'll, I'll take it off to speak to you. But yeah, it's about recovery. Um, the Feel Good Nation is one of my sponsors. I come here for the red light therapy and then the oxygen chamber, sitting it for an hour. So usually I don't have my phone, but he let me use it today. Nice. Nice, man. So tell me about uh, your training, bro. You're in the thick of things right now, preparing for your fight on the 10th of uh, February, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Like, honestly, things are going great, my end. Uh, so I truly believe that this is the best I've ever been. And um, no, it's, I, I said recently in another podcast that you, know, you always think you push the hardest and then next thing, the next camp, you find something else. This camp, no, I've, I've went deeper than I've ever thought. So I'm fighting for five five rounds. I've never um done that before. So I know I've had to step up even more and you know that all over Christmas and the holidays, everywhere was shut. So all I was doing was focusing on my like, like conditioning and running and getting, getting fit. And uh now that the classes are back, it's it's coming into it and I feel like I'm so far ahead than I've ever been. So I'm pretty excited. That's that's my biggest confidence booster is you not know, having the, the gas and the fitness. Nice, bro. Yeah, you. Dave, David Goggins often talks about us thinking that we've reached our limit. Like people that think they're going as hard as they can can have only gone like twenty percent, right? So yeah, there's always levels to get higher. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely true. Like, like I said, no, I've always trained hard and stuff, but I've never trained to the level I'm training at now. And you no, know, it's not that I didn't want to in the past. It's just they like can say you find that wee bit more every time and. Yeah, I'm in a good place, I guess, mentally and too, and I know I'm excited for it and I'm enjoying the whole process. So I guess that's obviously a big part of it as well. Like I look forward to my sessions, even the conditioning sessions. Like as much as no, it's fucking nerve wracking and I know it's just getting me better and that's that again, that's what it's all about. And then the getting to that level physically obviously will help your psychological sort of level as well, right? It it leads into confidence and feeling ready to do the job, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, no, the psychology side of things is something I've been really working on. Like, so this this time last year, I was getting ready for a gala. And after that, obviously, things didn't work out. And I just thought, no, that was it. I was basically retired. And now here I am, flipping, flip the coin the other side and fighting for the, the, the title um, a year later. So, and the number one spot and all. So, it's not, it's, it's been good to, to find they'll get deep inside the head and pick out some boxes and they'll really go to a level psychologically as much as physically that, again, that I've never been through before. And no, and just being able to understand the process and the pressure and no, try and understand myself a lot better has been a massive turnaround for me. Man, so you've got your big fight coming up. Uh, you're fighting Rod Costa for the Bantamweight Eternal title in uh, Perth. At, it, at HBF Stadium, bro. It's a, it's a big one, bro. You've you've mentioned yourself. It's the people's uh, main event. It should be a good one. Yeah, for sure. Like, no, this is the one that everybody wants to see. Obviously, we've got a little bit of beef going back and forward over the internet. It's created a bit of hype and caught the eyes of it. You no, know, all the fans. And again, you no, know, it's like my kryptonite is to see if Alan Philpott really has turned the table and if he can deal with, you no know, at that level because like every time in the past I've got to the that that top stage ready to make, make the breakthrough like I fumbled or you no know, something's happened that, that I haven't been able to get the win and it's, again I, I believe it's always been the mental side of things but um I, I guess no it's it's definitely the people's main event bro but, but I can't take anything away from the actual main event though Quillen and Dumb Man Far have really stepped up but I do believe that me and Rod is the fight that everyone's coming to watch yeah man I'm talking about like toughness bro Rod Costa you you guys have your beefs and that you respect his his skills especially in the BJJ area but the other thing he does have is that toughness right like he's been through some wars and he's gotten through he may not have won the fights all the time but he's pushed himself through some big wars right so you got a pretty tough opponent ahead of you yeah oh 
put on the force going a bit mad here. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Like he's probably the best punch bag in Australia. You know what I mean? Like he's no, nah, he's. I'll give him credit. He can he can take a shot. I know that he's not going to be uh, easily put away, but I do believe that I can put him away and that I'm totally different to anyone he's ever fought before. You know, like people get in front of me and they, they watch me and they think they can figure me out on the feet and stuff, but no one can figure me out on the feet, bro. He, yeah, he, his only chance of beating me is jiu-jitsu. No, my, I've got striking and my MMA game is so much better than his. And this is MMA, it's not jiu-jitsu. So like, Whenever he's underneath me and he's trying to roll for submissions and stuff, I'm going to be elbowing his face off. I'm going to be punching the head off him. I'm going to be, like, creating space and getting up there. I'm not going to sit here and play jiu-jitsu. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not there to play jiu-jitsu. You know? like, maybe in the past, my ego would have got the better of me wherever they know. I can take him there. Like, but I don't need to. You know what I mean? Like, the only way we grapple is if I want to grapple, if I want to initiate that and... I'm coming confident enough that I can take him down and I can keep him there and I can beat him up on the floor as well. But that's only if I decide to, I want to. Like, no, it's not, it's a no brainer. He's jiu jitsu. I'm a better striker. No, it's, it's basically a striker first grappler. I'm going to be looking to keep the majority of on the feet. He's going to be trying to get me down because, no, he, he can't touch me on the feet. If I play jiu jitsu with him, I'm, there's a good chance I get submitted. But if I play MMA with him, there's a Good job that I put him away, and that's that's going to be the biggest eye opener I think for him and his team. Like I, I really do think they're underestimating me because of my past experiences getting submitted with people that know. Like, well, as Rob Costa said that about Abdallah, Abdallah's got no jiu jitsu and stuff, and you know he's maybe not the best grappler. He did get me. He got me whenever I was at a weak stage, and um, you know I was weak minded. I was softer. I was like thinking about other things rather than being in the moment. And so I've changed a lot in a year. Um, and I hope he has too. I hope he's done what I've done. And like after them two losses, it really dug deep, went there, fixed them holes, worked harder than ever, and he's in here the best he ever had. Because I don't want the rug poster that's been there in the last previous experiences because that's not a rug poster that's on our level. And a, a rug poster that deserves to be the number one. Do you know what I mean? I want the yeah. rug poster that you know, beat Manu and beat Sean Etchell. And it comes out, you know, and, and wants to win and fight. And I believe he will. Like, I, I, I'm hoping, I really hope that he has, because I have. I've, I've dug deeper than ever. And he's getting the best Alan Pogbot ever. Let's see, man. You mentioned uh, in another interview and just now pretty much that you want to punch a face off, off him. Uh, it's pretty good, bro. But looking at the last couple of fights, like they kind of been different style of fighters, right? Like uh, heavier guys that are kind of grappling based, Dan Hearden and, and, uh, and Ethan Thomas. When you look back, uh, you look at something like uh, Jack Jenkins. Is that something you kind of like would aspire to do? Like kind of shut him down on the feet a bit? That, like, that, like, have you ever seen my fight against Gustavo Fossaroli, bro? Gustavo, no, he was the man. He was the, it was a long time ago, but he was the man in front of me. He was, no, again, a really, really legitimate black belt, but he also had a better MMA game. And if you see that fight, bro, that's pretty much what it's going to be. It's going to be me dancing around, picking them off, piecing them up. If there's a take down there, I take it, stay calm, few shots, get back on my feet or stay there for the round. And that's the way it's going to be, bro. Like, I've got my own style, my own unique style, and I adapt to however my opponent goes. Like I say, then times I've lost. Like, I'm not taking away from my opponents. They're all top opponents, and they beat me because they're, they're high level. But I made mistakes in that fight that they capitalized on. I didn't go in there and get dominated and beat up. So like, if you look at Abdallah, look, he is absolutely demolishing everyone. But like, like, whenever I fought him, like I was over, all over on like a rash. Whenever my knee went, my head went, that was psychological. It's just a van here here and he's not been bullying everyone. Same thing. So he couldn't even deal with me. I uh, had him robbed. He took me down once. I got back up. I caught him. I done no damage. Same thing happens. He desperately takes me down. I fall in and instead of being smart, I make the mistake. He submits me in the same as the Diego fight. But... No, that's not an excuse. I'm not making no excuses. Them boys deserve the win. They beat me fair and square. But you know, that's like Rob Costa, like I'm I'm here, bro. I'm and I'm but I'm here, like I'm a different animal completely. And no, I'm not somebody that goes in here and tries to knock people out in the first round. Like I can beat him up for five rounds and I know he can be beat up for five rounds. But I truly believe that 
the level I'm on that I'm ready for five, but I don't need more than two rounds. I'm I'm confident I put him away inside two rounds. And that's not being cocky, that's pure confidence. And that's because I believe I, I'm on a level that no one's seen over here yet from me. Nice man. And and I understand that your goal is to like take him out on the feet a bit, then scissor take down to heel hook. That's the correct uh prediction. Yeah, gonna, right? yeah, so I'm gonna come out and do like a flying knee, dance around, little calf kick, and then jump in for the scissor or an MI roll, maybe. <laughs> That's the way. That's what we want to see, bro. We want to see flashy finishes and finishing him with a heel hook would be awesome. Well, bro, I'm telling you, bro, like, like my leg lock game's really, really been coming on because obviously I've happened, they work the defense. And then you know, I saw it's, it's making me, you know, starting to counter attack and stuff. And I've been getting some serious grappling in for this fight, bro. Like, I'm not going to lie, but some high level guys and they've been smashing me. and I like, know it's 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 good to make confidence because I'm seeing progress with them. Um and that's in just straight jujitsu. That's not with really, like strikes and then sometimes I'll go in there and I'll like purposely play an MMA game there. I'm just stall and hold on position and it's like I'm not being touched at all. Like I'm not being dominated as such. I'm not getting submitted. If I'm in position, I'm able to scramble, get back up and you know, like I'm with a team now that's all round and look is a great coach and his style of coaching is perfect for my style of fighting so it's like we're just bouncing off each other the energy's high you know, Chris is now on the card as well um, so there's a good energy a good vibe got a couple of amateurs all getting ready for the fights so yeah man like honestly I'm just so so excited for the fight um, still got four weeks left which is even better for me because oh, it's even more time to get better again and you know, I feel ready, bro. I feel like if we were to fight this weekend, I'm ready to go. Nice. That's a good thing, bro. So in a perfect world, bro, how many fights would you expect to have in 2024 all going well? Well, I want to be good three or four, bro. Three or four. Like, if I'll get this, and then defend it. No. Um, if, if it don't get signed after this, which no, I might, I might not. Um, if, it, if it was to get signed, obviously it's different. If it wasn't, I would love to get um, defend it in Sydney. The main event in Sydney would be massive. And then obviously off to one of the bigger shows and try and get one or two in before it ends there. Yep. Bro, one last question. Um, you're fighting on the on the show with Quillen Salkild and Don Marfan. What's your what's your prediction for that one? It's a hard one, bro, because I feel like Don Marfar's uh, got a lot better from their first encounter. Uh, but you know, like I really like both. Fighters, I like both their styles. They're both young, and uh, no, I'm, I'm glad I'm not their weight class, to be honest. But um, I think I think Wheeling might age it again, bro. Like I think no, it might be a little bit closer, but uh, I can see Wheeling and probably taking over at some stage. Maybe get the finish later in the rounds, or like no decision his way. Cool. Thanks, bro. All right. So we got Perth, February 10th, Eternal 82, HBF Stadium. We'll see Alan Super Ali Philpot. Trying to get the title from Rod Costa, man. Good luck with it. All the best. Thanks for your time again. Appreciate it, bro.